Hello YouTube. Before starting on this video, can I just say a big thank you to all you subscribers out there. Just this past weekend this channel had its 100th subscriber. Thank you to each and every one of you. And now a warm welcome to all of you to this introductory video on how to use Professional Flight Planner X or as it's often referred to PFPX. I won't be going into any great depth here, I'm just going to show you how you can create a flight plan quickly and simply. There will be an advanced video at some time in the future. PFPX is designed to make the creation of a flight plan a fast and straightforward affair. It will also do all of the weights and measures calculations for you. If you've ever experienced how long it takes to do this by hand, you'll appreciate what this application can do for you. If you've never created a flight plan by hand, consider watching my video on flight planning with SIDS and STARS, where I walk you through the process of flight planning using freely available tools and information. One of the first things we need to do with PFPX is to enter in the details of any aircraft that we're going to fly. So let's open up the aircraft database and here you can see that I've already entered in one aircraft that I use at present. Let's add another one to see how the process works. We selected the aircraft database from the main menu and if we look under the new button there are two options new aircraft and new from template. Most people including myself first time round go straight to the new aircraft option however I think you'll get better results by selecting new from template. So when we do that you'll see here in the template section a whole load of flight sim aircraft by organizations, companies that you'll probably recognize. So we have some Aerosoft stuff there, the Evolution Airbus, uh, the iFly Boeing, PMDG Boeing and so on. So for this video let's create the Aerosoft Airbus A320. Um, let's take the version without sharklets. With that selected just click apply and you're now presented with a whole ton of information that applies to the Airbus A320. We're asked to enter in a registration number here. Uh, this is just as a reminder for us so that when we go to plan a flight we choose the right aircraft for that particular flight. So I'm going to choose G dash, G of course being for the UK and EZY because this will be an easy jet aircraft this is the second uh, one that I've got. I'll use B. So Golf, Echo, Zulu, Yankee, Bravo. I'm not going to enter a tail number uh, and that's all I need to do. So let's save and save aircraft rather than save as template. And those are all our details entered there. That's it. The aircraft has been entered. We're good and ready to go. Next thing to do is to create a flight. Now the default position that PFPX puts you in is on the schedule tab but actually you don't need to create a schedule at all to be able to plan a flight. Go instead direct to the flight tab. Now all the information we enter is going to be entered in this data entry section over here first thing I'd point out to you is this info box as I'm going to call it here. This will always give you a steer on what data you need to enter next to continue planning your flight. So right now it's telling us to enter our departure and destination airports. The second thing I'd point out to you is that we have these red indicators and green indicators on some of the information that's shown. The sections that have the red indicator show that more detail is required. Those with the green indicator show that they've got all the information that they need. 
The final thing I'd point out to you for the data entry is that those sections that require information will highlight the data boxes with a red background indicating the minimum information that's needed to be able to plan your route. So let's enter in the departure and destination airports. I'm going to recreate the route that I flew in my flight planning with SID and STARS video and go from Gatwick which is Echo Golf Kilo Kilo to Manchester which is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. Now notice as soon as I've entered those two all the data here automatically populates and fills. Generally I leave all of it at its default. The only thing I would point out to you, but simply because I found this to be quite interesting, is that the type of operation will affect the amount of weight that your aircraft carries. For some reason, I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but I don't know what it is, if you're running a scheduled air service, the standard weight per passenger is 84 kilos. If you're running a non-scheduled operation, it's less than that. It's, it's about 76 kilos or something. If you're running general aviation, military or other, then the passenger weight is 100 kilograms. As I say, I don't know why that is the case, but clearly it is. And flight planners are using it to, to good effect. And I'm sure they have the stats to back this up. Anyway, just, just a little aside about that required data there. Next up is the aircraft where we will choose the registration and tail number of the aircraft that we would use for this route. Now in the video I created we use the Airbus A319 so I'm just going to select that from this list. For the payload section which is up next I can either enter in details of the payload or I can push random payload. I'm going to again replicate what I did on that demo flight which was to have 120 passengers uh, effectively no baggage but 3000 kilograms of cargo. The minimum fuel requirement is, is showing in green there's nothing for me to do here because um, when I planned earlier I set my fuel policy as being EU ops for European regulations. I think once that's selected it is the default. If you don't have one selected then select the appropriate fuel policy here and it fills in all of the required information. Next up is the route. So if we take a look at that um, we have a number of options available to us in the drop down box here. We can either edit one, we can load one, or we can let PFPX find one for us. Let's do that. It comes back extraordinarily quickly. Um, now, for those of you, again, who followed my last video, you'll know that the Biggin Hill standard instrument departure is only allowed or intended to be used for aircraft that are landing at Heathrow or Northolt. Now this route that we're flying is not, but still it's using the Biggin Hill SID. This is just an indication, if you like, that this isn't necessarily a real world route. So if you wanted to, you could go in here and edit this route to be more real world like. How you do that is a subject that I'll leave for the advanced version of this tutorial. OK, with the route selected, I'm just going to leave it as it has been calculated by PFPX. Now we need to go down and select an alternate. Again, we've got a red background showing here on the data we need to supply. So let's drop that down and select Find. So in here, we're looking for airports that are suitable for us to divert to should our landing airport not be available for any reason. If it's not already filled in, do put in the minimum runway length. By default when I first ran this that was left blank and the first alternate airport I was given for one of the routes I calculated uh, took me to an airport that had an ICAO code but actually no runway which is as much use as a handbrake in a canoe. So do make sure you put your minimum runway length in and then depending on the uh, option you set 
it will give you the nearest airport that you can divert to, in this case, Liverpool. So click Apply, and it gives that as your destination alternate. For the route, again, let's let PFPX find a suitable route, and it's updated and drawn on the map over here. And with that done, you can see that all of our sections are coloured green, the whole tab is coloured green, and the next option available to us is to compute the flight. So let's do that. As you can see, quick and easily done. Um, the whole route is then drawn on the map over on the right hand side, so we're all good to go. You can leave through the individual pages now that the flight has been calculated and see information relating to your fuel, your flight plan, the information that's uh, given and held by ATC, weather en route, and any NOTAMs that apply over the uh, duration of your journey. And really, that's it. We're done. That That is the route planned. You could at this stage, if you wanted to release the flight, which uh, is a whole dispatch term which I don't need to get into here. Probably I'll discuss that in a future video for the more advanced uh, way of being able to use PFPX. What is useful to us now, though, is to know how to export this route so that we can use it in our flight sim. And the way to do that is to go here to the export button. And then you've provided a whole list, again, of different manufacturers and their aircraft and the location where the flight plans for those particular products are stored by default. You can also go in here and make changes to it yourself. So I use the Aerosoft Airbus, so I've got that selected up here. It stores any generated flight plan in the Documents folder and then in the Aerosoft Airbus Flight Plans folder. You set the Documents folder up here by using the Browse button and selecting where your document folder is. I don't need to do all of this, of course, I've already done it before, but just so that you know how this whole thing works. The route is going to have the name EGKK, which is our departure airport, and EGCC, which is our arrival airport, and then it's just followed with a numeric. It will generate this for you automatically. Uh, you don't need to worry about, oh, do I have version 3 or version 4? It sees what's already in the folder and creates that name for you uniquely. Once you're ready, hit the Save button. It then goes through and you'll get a message up telling you how many of the routes were saved. If they were saved successfully, they're coloured in green. If they were unsuccessful, they'll be coloured in red. I only export the two, so that's all we need to worry about. So there we are, that's the thing exported. And because we've exported it for the Airbus to this particular directory, I'm able to pull that in to the MCDU on the Aerosoft Airbus as a corporate route. So I don't need to enter in all of the individual waypoints and airways manually. It's all provided for me. With one important exception. This save facility for the export does not export the SID and the STAR. This is quite common practice, of course, because by the time your flight comes around, the weather or any other circumstances could well have changed, in which case you'll need to do um, apply the SID as appropriate as given to you by air traffic, perhaps at the time of takeoff, and also, of course, the STAR at the time you get near your arrival and need to code this into your MCDU. Just something to be aware of, not a big issue. There is a way to um, adjust the flight plan that is saved away such that it does hold the SID and STAR. But again, I'll save that for the advanced version of this video. OK, so that's done. That's repeated the flight that I did in my original video on how to do flight planning with SIDs and STARS. So. Just let's go through it one more time with a completely new route, but I won't go through all the individual detail this time. Let's just see how quick and easy this can be. So if I want to plan a new route, let's go back over to the Flight tab 
and I'll select new. So this time I'm going to go from Echo Golf Golf Delta, which is Bristol, to EGPH Echo Golf Pap Hotel, which is Edinburgh. All the details have populated. For that flight, let's say I'll use the Airbus A320 this time. For the payload, let's choose a random payload. So I've got 139 adults, five children, one infant, with a mixture of baggage and cargo. Fuel, it's already doing its thing because I've got the policy selected. For the route, again, let's let PFPX calculate it. There we go. For the alternates, again, let's let PFPX find it. Glasgow looks good to me, so we'll apply that. With all that done, we need to calculate the route for the alternate. There it is in. Everything's coloured green. We can compute the flight. That's it. We're done. So there we go. Quick and easy. You can see how effective this last route is by joining me on my next Airbus video titled Bristol to Edinburgh, where I also start to inject other advanced features like real live weather using Active Sky Next, air traffic background chatter, and the all new Rex Soft Clouds. I hope you'll join me then, and I look forward to virtually seeing you then. Thanks for watching.